So we're going to look here at what the X asset system is under the GitLab docs of the official Flash smart contracts. It says an X asset system, which is not yet implemented, will enable asset holders of integrated blockchains to mint a wrapped version of the asset onto the Flare network. For example, XRP, LTC, ADA, and more. The wrapped asset will be minted against native token collateral. The FTSO is a crucial component that will enable this minting. So native token collateral, what is that? That means the native token, so XRP or LTC or ADA. So it says the FTSO is crucial component that will enable this minting to occur backed by fairly priced collateral. So it's going to be backed then by FLR. Well, well now we're going to watch this FTSO demo that shows that the FTSO system is already up and running and ready to go to query those price feeds. So when people ask, is this real? Is this just a uh, theory? No because you understand the protocols that allow this to take place. It's because of the protocols, and like I've been saying, the values in the protocol, it's the protocols of the FTSO and the state connector that allow this to take place. So any blockchain integrated with Flare will have a dedicated X asset minting system connected to an FTSO feeding asset versus dollar price signals. As we saw, right, as we see here in the demo, the FTSO price signals will be used to maintain a safe collateral ratio in the X asset system. The price signals will also be open for usage by any on chain consumer. So the F asset system was a, a technical white paper delivered by the Flare team of how you could do it with an agent system but this is more analogous to the self-mint. So what does that mean? Well, you would take your own XRP, you would hold it in your own wallet, and then you'd put Flare up on the Flare network. This would all be self-contained, and all you really need is a vault contract that locks your Flare on the Flare network because the state connector can monitor the underlying XRP. And say you minted F, whatever this is called. Let's call it FXRP just for argument's sake. FXRP, if you want to move any of your XRP, it's going to know that. So the system can be designed. Now, there could be technical little differences on the parameter, but it's basically just a smart contract on Flare. So when people say, is this real? Yes, it's real because the protocols allow it to be real. If there weren't protocols, then no, it couldn't happen. But it's really just a smart contract and a matter of who designs or however the DAP interface is designed because the protocols produce the price feed that's necessary. And then you got the state connector, which monitors the other network and the native collateral. And this would allow you to earn from the incentive pool because any wrapped asset brought to Flare will earn from the incentive pool, which is 20 billion Flare, part of the total supply that didn't go to Ripple, didn't go to Jed, didn't go to the scam accounts, and then the foundation donated towards. That's going to come out and then be distributed to those who mint. It won't be distributed every day or every other day or twice a week. It'll probably be a longer duration, and it'll be able to allow you to buffer that collateral. So as more comes out, you could mint more than XRP, but it's the safest per likely. Now, I don't know if this is how it's going to roll out. This is how they describe it in the official docs. There could be certain parameter changes. However, there could be three dApps that roll it out in three different ways. So it doesn't, it, it's not necessarily one. I think that's what I think a lot of people got stuck on. I was like, oh, the F asset to be implemented. This is not a project. This is not a dApp. Flare Network is a blockchain. It's a layer one trying to solve one of the biggest problems. So we have to understand and look at it like that. Now, there's many people building on it. Blockchains take a while to get going. We've had a canary network, and we got two embedded protocols. The second one, the state connector, that demo here, is on Costin. So look, at, listen to how he says they could query the price of XRP and even match it to Flare. So this is ready to go once the state connector is basically stood up. It's just the attestation client, basically. And they've expanded the vision. So they've expanded this outward to combine the FTSOs, 
the validators and the attesters all into one. That takes longer. And this is built on Avalanche's architecture, the full architecture of the three chains. So it is a little more complicated than initially, but the vision is bigger. And we do need the TVL. I do think that's important because something has to swallow up this distribution coming out. Now, this is a distribution. After three years, the flare drops ends. It's a hard cutoff. There's no more. The inflation, so it's not inflation. So you don't want to call that inflationary rewards. It's part of the supply. So you have to look at it as like you earn those that your ownership claim in the network. As more comes out, it's your percentage of ownership to the network. And then it ends in three years. It's over, hard cut. And the the inflationary rewards go down every year from 10% to 7% to 5%. So it's on a declining scale. Those drops are not inflationary rewards, technically. And the incentive pool is not inflationary rewards. And those will be eaten up by these TVL. And TVL is important, not just because it drives price or it takes off the market, because it creates utility, because the asset is now being used to produce this bridge. Now that's one utility, just one of many that you'll see FLR be used for in the future. So this demo, I thought was very interesting going back to it and just listening to how he talks about specifically how they query the FTSO. System natively on Flare, we need to do, we will select a currency from one of the Flare supported currencies. Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin, XRP Ledger. And once we select a currency, the DAP will automatically query the FTSO system natively on Flare and calculate the price of an NFT in BTC, for example. For our example, we will use XRP. We select XRP in the, and the Flare FTSO system automatically gets us the correct price in XRP. Next, clicking on the button Reserve NFT sends a reservation transaction on Flare and we reserve an NFT. So this is performed on Flare and signed with Bifrost. We sign the transaction, we see we're minting it on XRP Ledger, and this is just a normal EVM transaction. Once the transaction is signed, our NFT is reserved. So once the transaction is confirmed, the user immediately receives the information about the transaction on an external chain that needs to be paid. So we see, we should pay to this address with this specific reference and with this amount. And the amount again is calculating using the FTSO system without trusting any centralized entity. Now we're gonna leave the Flare ecosystem and make the payment for our NFT, but we're gonna do this on an XRP ledger. So we again sign. So it's so in that demo, there's a demo app or DAP, right? That's what that interface is that he's connecting to. That's what Bifrost is connecting to is the DAP. Now it says the DAP queries the price and just calculates what it is in XRP. So there's what this answers is, are DAPs capable of calculating the price in the other asset? And yes, it is. So this means the FTSO, any application that is built using the FTSO is able to just query what it needs from the FTSO in a trustless decentralized manner and then calculate that price in XRP because it's giving the XRP USD price it's able to calculate it from Flare to XRP that's what it says that's what he says in this I think that's very telling so that kind of answers the question of for the F asset system and or X assets on just what the difference here is a reminder on what the X assets which I think it's fair to say is described as the self-mint system. The way it's described in their documents doesn't say self-mint, but from what we were told from self-mint from Hugo last year, and comparing that to what X assets are described as here, you could see that it's very similar and it's collateralized by the asset. It doesn't talk anything about agents, doesn't say anything about that. It just says using the underlying, using native flare to collateralize the asset. So this means that everything's there on the FTSO component. That answers the question in my eyes. I don't think we need anything more from the FTSO system. You know, the rewards distribution and all that collusion, it, it doesn't matter when it comes to the price. Now that's a separate thing when it comes to delegating and earning rewards component. 
its job is to produce a trustless decentralized price feed. It's doing that. So it's doing what it's supposed to do because it has 80 plus oracles. Systems don't have 80 plus oracles. And it's an over-engineered system because it's getting down to the nitty gritty of five decimal points on some assets like XRP. If you're going to the fifth decimal point on XRP, that's pretty far at 39 cents. That's three additional decimal points. That's pretty damn accurate um, going that far. You know, some would say that four decimal points or even three decimal points is close enough. But going to four, five decimal point, five, five decimal points is a lot. So just to give in perspective of how the FTSO system is pulling the price feeds. Now, it's taken the median price feed of all the prices. So the reward band is different than the actual prices that are outputted. And, and we got to understand that those are different. So it automatically chops off the highest 25, lowest 25. So nobody's going to come in and manipulate the price by putting something in much higher or much lower because it's automatically chopped off. So that's just part of the median price. Then there's a reward, which is based on a random sampling of whichever pairing over a certain period of time. There's a price epoch and a reward epoch. So those are just things to just note. And it's technical. We don't got to get into that just to know that they're separate. And the FTSO system is producing the prices that it needs to produce. Now, there's only 12 to 13 prices there right now. But this is meant to or designed to ultimately scale up to where he said hundreds, not thousands of price feeds. That's where it has to be able to. Now, I remember in the early days, they said if they had to, you know, over a longer term, this could scale up in other ways where it would move to like L2 or ha however that would be. But for the immediate future, it needs to scale for more than 12. Let's put it that way. And it could scale to different indexes of FTSOs. We could have different votes coming. I mean, it could scale horizontally, vertically, in all different ways. But for the F asset system and X assets, it's doing everything it needs to do. There's nothing that needs to be added. So it's able to support that right now. So check for that. State connector, it's able to read the XRP ledger that's on Costin now. That's not Flare. So keep that in mind. It's not Flare. It's Costin. So you think Songbird's contract's going to be aligned? Then it'll be on Songbird. Next is simply put it on Flare. So this idea that we talked about in the VIP group, some people on Twitter saying, well, it's not real. Uh, this is what's real. Because this is what you need to create that type of system. You know, there's a lot of people on Twitter that don't understand how the protocols work. And that's why you might have came here for the money, but you're going to learn the tech. Because you're going to have no choice if you want to understand this. And it doesn't mean you have to be a programmer or developer, but if you want to be at the frontier of a new asset class and a new technology, you got to understand the tech of some sort. And a lot of people want to just, you know, have all the answers right away. And that's just not how it is, unfortunately, when you're at the frontier of something new. There is no easy answer. There's no some ways to dumb it down. You just got to learn it. And I think everyone in here has over time because we've had two years to prepare just to understand the basics you don't have to know every single detail that works just understanding the overview is more than 99.99 percent and that's really all that's necessary when you understand what you own because a lot of people own an asset and they might know oh i delegate it but they don't know what they're delegating it for and if you could just understand that that gives you a baseline and then it's just yeah, it sometimes takes extra time and that's why this group's here so that as new things are developed and they get complicated, we could break that down and there'll be easy features. So I call easy features like auto claiming. Like I thought that was awesome. I didn't have to use one second or one minute of my day having to claim. It automatically wrapped it, automatically claimed it, and there was no risk. So why would I not do it? There's no reason not to do it um, in my eyes. Worst thing that could happen? God forbid the executor doesn't claim. Okay, so you claim manually. That's the worst thing that could happen. So I'm all for the auto claim. I don't see any negatives against it. I have not seen anybody present anything in any way, shape, or form that why not to? Because um, there's no risk. So as long as it's trustless and there's no risk, because they are not trusting that executor. And I think it's going to take some people some while for that to get known throughout the community. But I'm sure everyone will be auto claiming by month three, four, five, because there's no reason not to. Now, when it comes to dealing with other strategies, I think it's going to be important because then you don't have to worry about those additional things and thinking about them and taking time to do them and then checking it. You know, it just automatically went there. 
And remember, the golden source of truth is always the blockchain, so the explorer, not what's on the UI interface. Even though Bifrost does a great job of laying everything out, gives the numbers.